Today, we're going to be looking at five strange features in PowerPoint that you might not have heard of. At least there's one that you haven't heard of. So make sure to comment down below which one that is. So we're gonna just jump right into it and start off with something that some people will think is, duh, that's so obvious. But there's some people out there who don't know that this feature in PowerPoint exists. So this is where you can add more than one animation to PowerPoint. So for example, if I just get a random shape, for example, this random sort of star, a um, funky star, you know, um, and just change the layout to blank, we can actually add more than one animation to this. So what some people think you can do is maybe just make it fly in. But what you can also do is go add animations and for example, fade out. So if you're in the middle of your PowerPoint, um, you can just make it fly in and make it fade out after that. And it doesn't stop there. You can also make it so that it happens together. So um, let's get rid of some of these and we can make it so that as it flies in, it also spins, right? So that's this is not, not gonna look very good, but I'm just trying to get the point that you can add more than one animation together. And what we're going to do is actually select with previous so that it happens at the same time. So if we go back into our slideshow and we hit our button, you can see it spins as it comes in. So obviously this animation doesn't look very good, but if you take it to the extreme, you can get something that looks like this, which is something I did in my previous video. It's a, it's a fireworks animation and makes it really complex. You can see all the amount of animations that I did there. And if you want to learn how to do this specific animation, just click in the top right hand corner and learn that for the new year and also happy new year. Okay, um, now let's move on to the next one. The next one is sort of something called morph transition. Um, so a lot of YouTubers, uh, like PowerPoint YouTubers, have actually been getting this out there. Um, but I also want to second that opinion, I guess, and add some more that you might not have heard about the morph. So if you haven't heard of the morph, it's basically a transition in PowerPoint, this one right here, that they added maybe a year ago-ish um, to the to the Microsoft PowerPoint. And what it does is, right now, if I if I create two slides, for example, duplicate slide. Um, it doesn't do anything because we've just got blank slides. But if I if I input an object to this second one, you can see that it looks like it just fades in, right? Now what the morph is doing is, especially in these effect options, we've got object selected. So it looks for similar objects and then it sort of moves it into position so that it, it like transforms the slide. So that might not make sense right now, but let's just change this blank. And you can see um, if we just take that um, very simply if we go back into our transitions and play it it moves it automatically now this is very useful when you've got loads of things that you want to move to one place or if you want to change shape so for example if I make this a bit smaller um, it will elongate itself so this is the sort of cool things that you can do and the second cool thing you can do with the morph transition is that if we've got two um, different blocks of text so for example Lovely, right? Um, it's very informative text. And if we just size that up and then write something completely different over here, more informative information. There we go. This is really building everyone's IQ in the room. Well, we've got now some, um, some text uh, that is very interesting. And if we go transitions and go morph, it just fades and fades out. Where's the morph transition? Now hold your horses. All we need to do is go to effect options and go character. So you can see it sort of switches the characters and fades in the characters that's not there. And this creates a really cool morph effect. And you can also do words. I don't think there's any words that correspond here, so it just fade in and fade out. But if you had corresponding words, it would also do the same thing as the character animation does. So this isn't even the last thing you can, you can do with the morph transition. We delete both objects you can actually completely transform both objects by going from a picture to a different picture uh, let me show you what i mean i won't get a picture but i'll just um i'll just go with a square well not square rectangle and then a oval right and then right now if i play the transition once again it's just fading and fading out not very interesting you could get the same effect with a fade or really a, a reveal but anyway um, what you can do is you can actually go back to home, go arrange and go selection paint. This is where it gets a bit tricky. You basically need to put the same name here, but putting the same name won't be, um, won't be what makes it. You also need to put double exclamation mark and then the same name. So I could just say morph, right? And then just copy 
go in here, double select there, morph. Right, so if we now play the morph animation, you can see it does a weird transform, which might work. So if I give you a, a real world example, um, and this is just my YouTube studio, uh, if I just search up, for example, PowerPoint logo, um, go images, and if we just took the first one, for example, just copied that in, and then took the next one, um, go, let's say, Excel logo, and took that Excel logo, um, we can actually do the same morph sort of animation here. So if I just copy this into this slide, and if I once again copy that oh, go morph with the exclamation marks double the exclamation marks and then if i do that again here and just delete the object underneath there you can see when we do the morph now it actually transforms the two shapes and you can also do it so that it it moves the shape so if i just size these down when we morph it, it actually changes shape and moves along, which you might find is cool and you might find some uses there. Now the third one is something called combining shapes. Now this one is probably the first one that you might not have heard of. So if we just delete all our slides again and click to add the first slide. What we do is that we just find two shapes, for example. Um, we have a circle, for example. Go lay out blank as well while we're at it. And if we put a random shape over it and just more random shapes, you can actually combine these shapes by selecting all of them, going shape format, going merge shapes, and choosing one of the above. And if we do union, it actually combines the shape to make one weird, weird shape. Um, now, you might think, oh, wait a sec, there's no uses for this, but there it really is. So for example, if you wanted to make some cool, um, cool sort of backgrounds or, or images alongside it, you could insert a Oh, icon sorry um a picture from the stock images and go um let's just choose one from from what comes up uh so let's just search up nature okay let's choose something that looks cool let's do um this now nah, we'll do we'll do some this is actually really hard to choose let's go go with the christmas season um so here we are we've got our christmas stock image in here and what we can do with this shape um, thing is that we can choose our round corner shape and then just pull that right in and then we've got like a tablet sort of shape I guess I guess you could call that a tablet sort of shape and we're just gonna actually size this down and what we can do is that we can copy this over each other I won't do too much because you're here to see the next ones aren't you um, but have some patience because you're going to see some cool stuff and what we're going to do now is just highlight all of them go shape format merge shapes union so this is now a full shape and what we can do is size this up we can even stretch it a bit so we've got our our sort of weird shape and if we select these two shapes go to shape format merge shapes and then intersect you can see we get some sort of nice um aesthetic for a powerpoint so you can put this to the side with some text over here and maybe even add a shadow to this etc now before i move on to the lot of uh, the last two features in powerpoint um, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below if you're still watching here and also um you can input your own ideas for new videos by commenting below if you want your own tutorials uh, made if you are stuck on something also comment below and if you really like this um, video also comment below and say which one you didn't know about okay moving on the, the second last one is going to be dictate so what we can do is actually select this dictate tool but we what we want is a text box first so this requires a microphone and i am currently using my phone as a microphone but i do have a built-in microphone to my system so what i can do is just select dictate and then just say whatever i want and you can see it starts coming up it's not exact so you can see it just says alan over there i have no idea why but you can see if you're making a informative powerpoint in your own school or something this might really help because you don't really need to type it so much if you've got a handwritten in a book or something you can just dictate it and then it'll start doing it and all you need to do is input your 
punctuation and just check it. And you can actually input punctuation yourself by saying like comma. And then that turns into a comma, which is actually pretty cool. And you can say full stop. And that turns into a full stop as well. And you could also say enter. Which didn't actually work, but like it sometimes works. Um, so this is actually a cool cool feature that you can do punctuation and text and stuff. I'm going way off the page, so let's just stop talking and you can just click this button and we've got lots of text, you see. Um, and that could already fill up one slide for your PowerPoint for whatever you're doing. Okay, the final one. Now this one is just a bit of fun and it might also help in your PowerPoints, especially if you're, you're like a teacher or something or want to create fun PowerPoints. So what this is, is 3D stock um, stock models, I guess you'd say, um, and they can even be animated. So for example, first of all, we could go insert 3D models and go stock 3D models. So first of all, we could just choose a random 3D model. So we could go with a, a wolf, I guess this is a wolf. Um, and it takes a bit of time to insert. It might take like a few seconds which I guess is long in this era of technology, I guess you'd say. But you can actually animate this by going to animations and doing a jump and turn, for example. And this will do a cool animation, especially for this dog, it looks pretty cool. And you can move it around by clicking this button and then you move it around and stuff. Okay, this isn't the last thing. Um, actually, as a bonus feature, this is probably one of my favorite things in PowerPoint is in the 3D models, you can go to all animated models and find things that are quite informative. So for example, we've got this earth about convection currents and stuff, uh, not convection currents, more like just currents, I guess. And we've got like tectonic plates and stuff, but this is actually one of my favorites. I'm a bit immature, I guess, if I find this funny, but like, I don't know, it's a bit of fun. Look at that, it's a toaster. Um, but as I was saying, you can also um, get more informative animated models that are like for geography and stuff so if you're a teacher or something this might really help you so thank you for watching this video if you found some of these really interesting make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below and check out this video for more animation and powerpoint content i will see you next time